Good evening. Cedric and I are here tonight to represent the ACES Magnet at Hudson's Bay High School. For the past four years, we've been involved in a project to repurpose the paper waste that is produced in the Vancouver School District. Most of us, most of us take a look at paper waste and we think of it as just trash. And we'd like to share something with you uh, that we've come across in the last few years and to change your perception of what trash is to a profit source and actually that this is a commodity. So what we've done over the past few years is take, take a look at, at what paper waste is. And most of us think of waste um, from a standpoint that it has no value. And what we found is that it has a great deal of value. Uh, when, you, when we recycle, we find that that, that um, waste is worth about $100 a ton. Uh, through our processes, we've found that we can actually turn that ton of paper waste into a $3,000 commodity. What we did is we started out with looking at uh, what the Vancouver School District really looks like. We spend $160,000 a year on waste removal. And at the end of the day, we actually throw out about a quarter of a million pounds of uh, paper waste in, in each of our schools. So we said, what, what do we need to do about that? What is something that we can change to make this a, a, a better system? And, and our answer to that was a process called micro-remediation. And really what we do is we take the waste of the school district, inoculate it with um, mushroom mycelia. In our case, it's called a pearl oyster mushroom. And we turn it into a food source. Uh, that food source sells at uh, Whole Foods or at Fred Meyers for about $8 a pound. And we determined that we could wholesale that for about $3 a pound. This all started about five years ago. We built a wastewater treatment plant on our campus. And at the end of the processes of what we were doing at the school, we had a biosolid. And we said, well, what do we do with that biosolid? We can turn it into compost or we can turn it into a, a fertilizer. And we said, no, let's, let's take that a step further. What, what else can we do with it? And that's when we got into this whole process of micro-remediation. Let's break it down even further and get a usable substance out of it. We, d we went even a step further than that and we contacted a farmer in eastern Washington by the name of Steve Camp. And Steve Camp uh, farms 2,800 acres of uh, wheat. And in between that wheat, he grows Camelina sativa. And Camelina sativa is a oil seed producing plant. And Steve crushes it and turns it into biodiesel to run his tractors. So we got a hold of Steve and he said, we said to him, what if we were to take that camelina meal that's left over from your biodiesel production and actually create another food source on it and break it down either, even further and allow that to go back into your wheat field and get a food source on it. We thought that would be pretty cool. It failed. We, we, it, it just didn't work. We thought that we had the greatest idea, how cool is this, and we just didn't get our processes working the way that we wanted them to work. Uh, when Cedric was a sophomore, he was working on this Camelina project and we said, wow, this is working not as great as we'd like. And he started messing around with paper waste, inoculating paper waste with mushroom mycelia. And lo and behold, the mushrooms loved it. And all of a sudden, the project started to take off. At this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to Cedric to talk about the processes that we, we currently use. So to grow the mushrooms, we begin by taking the caps of already developed mushrooms, uh, laying them on tin foil, and let them drop their spores. This lets us get a, a sterile spore. Uh, from there, we inoculate uh, sterile grain to keep the whole process uh, clean, uh, so we get a good end product. And it'll grow through the jars, and then we take those jars. You want to oh, advance? <laughs> 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 we take those jars, and uh, we inoculate the paper waste and it'll grow through and uh, create the mycelia of the mushroom. It's like the basic root structure. Uh, 
and from there, once it's uh, grown through and eaten all the lignin in the paper, I think you went a little too far there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, once it's eaten all the lignin in the paper, <laughs> it'll fruit and make mushrooms, and that's what you would buy in a store. To get to this point, uh, it took a lot of lab work. We had to calculate how much uh, oxygen they needed when they were fruiting, uh, moisture, uh, light, and what we came up with was a pot and pot system. And this was, we had a container that had holes in it that allowed oxygen to go through, uh, light to be on the substrate, and uh, it allowed for moisture, and then it would fruit out the sides through those holes. But we were having to drill the holes in the, each container uh, every time. So we came up with the pot and pot system so that we'd have that pre-drilled thing on the, out, or on the inside and then they'd sit inside uh, a non-drilled container so we could have them in dark storage when they're going through the growing process and then when they're ready to fruit, we pull it out, take it out of the outer structure and they'll grow. Uh, it also allowed us to grow vertically to save space. Uh, we messed around a little bit with large scale production uh, using bigger containers, uh, but we moved back into our small lab space uh, and started doing small scale to see how fast we could get it to grow with uh, different levels of initial myceliation. Uh, at the end of it all, we have the mushrooms and the broken down paper. Uh, with the broken down paper, we can turn that into a mushroom compost uh, that works really well with plants' roots. And we also uh, came up with a recipe for veggie burgers, so we actually have an application for all the mushrooms that are grown. Thank you for bringing it home, Zedrick. <laughs> Bottom line, compost and food from waste. It's a pretty cool idea. And if you think about the waste that we produce in the Vancouver School District, quarter million pounds. If you get a 50% biological return, you got a pound of cardboard, you get a half a pound of mushrooms. Uh, that's what we're, we're shooting for right now. What that works out to at a $3 wholesale price is about $389,000 worth of mushrooms instead of paying $160,000 for waste removal. And you can produce, that was loud, and you can produce a half a million veggie burgers. Uh, uh, uh. Name me a teacher that doesn't brag about their kids. Cedric and his team last year, as it was said earlier, uh, was a part of the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow STEM competition. There was 3,100 entrants into the program, and his team was selected by the Samsung engineers as the top project in the United States. <laughs> You can, you can see how happy Cedric was in the suit, <laughs> all right? But uh, the kids went back to New York City, competed in New York City. They then went to Washington, D.C. when they were selected. Uh, they met with Congresswoman Herrera Butler. They met with uh, Senators Murray and Cantwell. Um, Cedric was interviewed by Popular Science. He was written up in the Fortune 500 magazine and was interviewed by the Bloomberg radio station, which went around the United States and the world. Um, we met with the Secretary of Education, and all told, the kids won $154,000 worth of technology, travel, and uh, software. So. We have continued research. We have a refined business model that we're working on. And uh, we encourage you to don't throw it, but grow it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>